What's up, and welcome to Clarity for Parents of Athletes, bringing you stories from professional athletes about their parents and how they were raised. My name is Gabe Nosaire from aclearmind.com. Before I go too far, I want to invite you to share this episode and the podcast in general, as well as review it on Apple Podcast and rate it so that the podcast keeps spreading to others and benefiting children and parents. Um, Now, you can also leave me a voicemail through my website, aclearmind.com forward slash podcast, or go to speakpipe.com forward slash clarity for. In your voicemail, I invite you to let me know any topics you want me to discuss in a future episode or questions you have about anything at all and concerns you may have about raising your child as an athlete. If you feel comfortable with me sharing your voicemail, just let me know that. And if you want to keep it private just between us, let me know that as well and I'll respond to you. And I'd love to hear from you. Now, What were your biggest takeaways from the interview with Oguchi and Yewu? As usual, I have a couple. How about the fact that his parents just let him do his thing on the field with no interference and were often in the car taking time for themselves and recharging? How many soccer parents these days do you see doing that? Most parents are there by and some literally on the field during their children's games and yelling the whole game. Gooch's parents were chilling in the car and he still made it far in soccer because he he, his drive came from within and not from somewhere outside of him. Now, I'm not saying that all parents should just drop their children off and go take a nap in their car, although I think that would be really beneficial for both parents and their athletes. But, of course, parents want to see what their child is up to athletically, and children love to be watched, but there's always that fine line of being there to support and being there with a critical eye, which is really just a fearful eye. Now, what I mean by that is that so many parents need to motivate their children in athletics, but where they're coming from really is from a place of fear. Now, if you've listened to any of the other episodes of this podcast, you've heard me say that fear is the food of the ego. That's what feeds it. And we lecture our children about their performance on the field or court or rink and truly believe that we're helping, but it's far from the truth if we tune into our emotions if we're experiencing anger and frustration and irritation and other quote-unquote negative emotions, we're really experiencing fear. Fear that our child is not or won't be good enough. And really that we're not a good enough parent because of what our child does or doesn't do. Now, when I work with my clients, I usually do two things. The first is that I ask them to take this idea that we or our child are not good enough and to sit with it and to welcome that belief. Welcome all the painful emotions that come into their being and welcome them even more and even more and even more. This is so beneficial because it's not until we can be comfortable with ideas and beliefs that we're not good enough as a parent or even as a person that we can recognize that all we're doing is creating a story that isn't true. And once we do that, we're able to tap back into our higher state of consciousness and power. Now, that state comes from a place of love. And that leads me to another takeaway from my interview with Gooch. And it's so powerful to hear the amount of love that he felt, not only from his parents, but from his siblings as well. I've been around families where there is either a conscious or unconscious sibling rivalry looming in the family energy. Children were compared to their siblings and siblings compared themselves to each other, again, either consciously or unconsciously. This happens when we live life from the outside in. It's the idea that accomplishments, material objects, including money and other people are directly related to our success and happiness. And I've said it in several episodes before that that is a complete illusion. We're at our best 
when we tune into the fact that life is actually lived from the inside out via our thoughts. It is not winning the state championship that directly makes us happy. It's our thought about winning the state championship. Those thoughts change over time. They peak immediately after winning and make us feel great, but then the feeling lessens over time. The fact that we won a state championship itself does never change, but our feelings, which come from thought, can change over time. When we live more in the reality of the inside-out nature of life and know that our true power and happiness doesn't come directly from outside sources, we live life from a place of love. And that is the most powerful influence in medicine that we need to achieve at a high level, just like Gooch did. You heard him say it a couple times in the interview that his parents focus on keeping them happy, them the children. Now, that doesn't mean showering them with material objects and giving them free reign to do whatever they want. I repeat this from previous episodes as well. Children need structure. But it always comes down to how parents speak to their children. It's either from a place of love or a place of ego. The more love and patience we have with our children, the more love and patience they will have with themselves. The more love and patience they have with themselves, the more they can flourish both on and off the field. Gucci's parents were incredible role models for their children with their work ethic and their loving nature. And I feel it's easy for many parents to forget the importance of being a role model to their own children. Children are little sponges and pick up on all the little nuances their parents have, as well as that of their siblings and other close connections. They pick up either consciously or unconsciously how we're living our life, how hard we work or don't work, how well we do or do not take care of our bodies, how kindly or unkindly we speak to others, how much we do or do not complain about others, how mindful we're being or not being. Overall, it's how loving we're being to ourselves, to them, and to others. Thanks for listening. Again, please feel free to connect with me via my voicemail at speakpipe.com forward slash clarity four. Again, that's speakpipe.com forward slash clarity four or go to my website at clearmind.com forward slash podcast. And in the voicemail, let me know if any concerns or questions you're experiencing or have or any topics you want me to cover for a future episode. Thanks again for listening. Much love to you and many blessings.